Hello and welcome to GameStack. In this episode, we're going to talk about controllers from the 32-bit systems to current. And we're going to take a look at all these controllers right here and a few more. Dave, what the hell are you talking about? There are no controllers on this table. Yes, there are. Where? Right here. <laughs> Dude, how the hell did you do that, you freak? <laughs> With magic. I like magic. Yes, yeah, the magic you taught me. <laughs> I must have. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at some of these fantastic controllers and some of the not so fantastic ones and we'll tell you what we think about them. And here we have the original PlayStation controller which was in my opinion a very comfortable controller to hold with two awesome grips, four shoulder buttons, some crazy weird design with the buttons X square triangle circle which you originally you're thinking what the hell is this crap but actually uh, made it pretty easy to memorize where the buttons were on the on the control pad. Uh, later on after Nintendo released their analog stick Sony said what the hell we're gonna release two of the analog sticks and they put them on their uh, revised PlayStation 1 controller. After that came the PlayStation 2 which guess what? Nothing changed except for the color. It is now black and says DualShock 2. Ooh. And then, so what? Comes the PS3, and what changes? Ooh, it's wireless now, and has a PS button, and it has six axis control. And that's pretty much it. Sony is very happy with her controller, and so am I. I think it's very comfortable. This is the N64 controller. This is the green version, because it's Dave's. I would never buy a green version. But it has like three grips, because you know, you're supposed to hold it like this when you play a 2D game, I, I suppose and hold it like this when you're playing a 3D game with polygons. And, and it's, it's fairly comfortable. It has a little Z trigger under here, which is kind of cool. And you know, overall it's, it's functional, but what I don't like is the labeling. There's B, A, and these four buttons are C. And they're just like up, right, down, and left. What the hell is up with that? That makes me very, very angry. It makes me want to murder somebody. I like that they have two rows of three, don't get me wrong, but I just think these should be the same size as these buttons. They're just, I don't know what they're doing. And a lot of people complain that the sticks to the analog uh, controller break over time. I've never had this happen to me, but a lot of people complain about it, so it must be true. I just don't play N64 enough to ever have a controller break on me. And here we have the controller for the Panasonic 3DO game system. Uh, it has three buttons on the front, two shoulder buttons at the top, and of course your stop and play, I guess. And the D-pad, which is very, very stiff, it doesn't do diagonals very well. So it was recommended that you loosen the three screws on the back and somehow, magically, that would restore the diagonals. But when I tried that, I really didn't notice much of a difference. And with 3DO controllers, it's kind of interesting because they have a port on them, another control port, so you can plug in another controller and you can just daisy chain like five or six hundred of them together and that's how you do multiplayer on the 3DO. And here we have the Super UFO which is the name of the controller I'm assuming and it's a 3DO six button controller for uh, games such as Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It has six buttons, it has turbos and the turbo dipsticks are unbelievably hard to switch. This is fairly cheap feeling controller, cheap plastic, it, it moves around a lot in your hands. Um, there's not much else to say except for this crazy battery compartment on the back side of it which who knows what this is for. It takes two AAA batteries and I'm guessing if your power goes out your controller is still going to work but if your power is out your TV is going to be out as well. And on the back cover of the battery compartment it has this little nub which is going to be touching the battery. So who knows what this is for. Just a very cheap design and I guess it it would work for a few games, but I don't know. Here is the controller for the Atari Jaguar 64-bit system. Um, it's very, very cumbersome to hold. This thing is huge. And it has C, B, and A buttons. Uh, they're very, very steep. I really don't like that. And plus, they're backwards, so I guess all Atari owners are dyslexic, just like all Nintendo owners. Plus, it has probably one of the worst D-pads I've ever felt in my life. And it's just... Your thumb is at an angle coming at it, and it just doesn't feel very natural at all. It has your standard buttons here, nothing really going on on the back. And it has this keypad. Now, certain games would have overlays 
depending on the game, which would have extra functions. And like when you're playing, you know, a Street Fighter game on the Jag, the top row here is your three punches, and the bottom row here is your three kicks. So you got, you know, your dragon punches or your hurricane. Oh, wait, there's no Street Fighter game for the Jag. Who am I kidding? But this keypad, I mean, what happens if I start pressing random numbers here? What? Oh, bloody hell. And here is the Virtual Boy controller, which uh, is fairly comfortable to hold. It's got two really big grips on it. Uh, for you, it's got two crazy directional pads and four buttons, which originally when I first held this, I was like, hey, they were considering left and right-handed game players, but in actuality, I think most of the games only used for the uh, left-handed game player with your left hand on the digital stick anyways. But um, it's fairly comfortable, but you know, sadly there was only 14 games released in the US, so you really didn't have much time to use it. Oh, hi. I just can't stop touching the Sega Saturn pad. It's very comfortable. In fact, this is probably my favorite controller ever made. The form factor is its just perfect. The D-pad is the best ever made. Uh, the two rows of three buttons for a total of six buttons on the front. It's just perfect for fighting games or pretty much any type of game. Uh, the start button is a little bit rubbery, but who cares? How often do you press start? Like once every time you start the game? Yeah, that's it. And then the shoulder buttons are fine. Um, I really can't say enough good things about this, so I'll, I'll stop it here. I, I, I wonder what Dave thinks about this controller. Joe, this is what I think of this controller. I approve. This is by far the most comfortable controller for the 32-bit to current system controller ever. It's awesome. I don't care if it doesn't have analog sticks. It's freaking awesome. This is the Sega Saturn 3D pad. All the other pads were in 2D only, but this one is in 3D. It's an analog pad and it kind of has a bit of a dead spot in the center, but it's not too bad. It's kind of mushy feeling. And these buttons are kind of shallow and the D-pad is kind of rubbery and the, well, it's, it's just kind of weird, but it, it works pretty well for games like Knights and especially Power Slave. And it has these analog triggers, so the further you press them down, the faster or further you move. And it works really well in games like Power Slave. And it has a detachable cord so that you can plug in your Dreamcast VMU from the future, see? Just like that. This is the Sega Saturn Mission Stick. And it's, you know, it's just an analog controller, but it really works well with Space Harrier and Afterburner. In fact, it really gives me that arcade feel when I played either of those games on this. And what's cool about this is the joystick can be on either the right or the left side. And this stick is just awesome. I mean, look at me here playing Space Harrier. Look how much fun I'm having. Now look at me playing Afterburner. Oh my goodness, I'm having so much fun. And this is a Sega Saturn Mission Stick. If you like arcade games, you want to get this. Whew. Wow, Dave, we've taken a look at a lot of these controllers and we still have quite a few more to talk about. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I guess it's time for intermission. Sega Dreamcast controller. You know, I love Sega, but I really don't approve of this controller very much. Let me tell you why. First and foremost is the D-pad. It has very, very sharp edges here, and it's almost painful to use. It really slices into your thumb. The analog stick has a huge dead spot in it, where it's just completely non-responsive until you move the stick so far. It has four tiny buttons on the front instead of six decently sized buttons. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with the uh, L and R triggers that I can find, but whatever. Uh, it has these two slots in here. You can plug in something like a uh, rumble pack to get your controller vibrating, or the memory card. In fact, this is the Sega VMU. Uh, the D-pad on the Sega VMU is better than the D-pad on the Dreamcast controller. It plugs into the slot here and it displays primitive graphics depending on what game you're playing. Uh, doesn't really help much, it's just kind of a gimmick, but the battery life in the VMU, it takes two batteries and the batteries last about 13 seconds and if the batteries run out you hear a big long beep 
every time you turn on your Dreamcast. And another thing about this controller is that the cord comes out of the bottom. That's not good design. Why does it do this? I know it's because this stuff's on the top, but I really think this controller could have been much better thought out. I'm disappointed in you, Sega. And this is the fishing controller for the Sega Dreamcast. Um, why I bought this controller, I'm not 100% sure. I really did like Sega Bath Fishing, and then they came out with Marine Fishing, so I guess I have two games that he uses, but god dang, the last time we played those games was 10 years ago. But uh, those, as far as I know, are the only uh, games he used. Actually, that's not true, because somebody, some weird creepy guy beat Soul Calibur using this controller, if you can believe it. This is the Xbox Controller S. It's a redesign of the original Xbox controller. In fact, I think it was the original Xbox controller for the system when it was released in Japan, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this is a very good redesign. It has uh, two analog sticks here, and they, they work very well. They're very precise, very easy to use. Uh, the D-pad isn't very good. It's, it's pretty stiff, but, you know, it'll do. I've felt worse. Uh, it has these kind of glassy type round buttons here. They're, they're okay, nothing really to complain about. Then it has a black and a white button here. You have to have a black and a white button for racial harmony. And it has uh, shoulder triggers. Uh, and of course you plug your Xbox Live microphone in here. But the original Xbox controller, geez, I almost need a forklift to lift this thing. It's huge, geez. Uh, it has two analog sticks, just like the other one, but they're shaped differently than each other. I have no idea why. And this D-pad, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's just a mess. It's shaped very oddly. The buttons are oval shaped and they're kind of at an odd angle. It's just horrible. Your black and white buttons are up here and the Xbox logo, you know, I, I guess it's so big just in case you forget what system you're playing. You know, you can see this thing from Mars, but I just don't know why they wanted it so huge. No one likes this, no one. Well, actually, I think there are two, no, three people in the entire world that actually prefer this big brute of an Xbox controller over the controller S. Wow, and this, isn't this awesome? This is a PlayStation 2 fighting pad, obviously, with a Kuma on it, uh, Capcom released, and it has six buttons on the face for all your Capcom fighting games. And uh, the cool thing about this, is, of course, is that you can use it on your PS3 with this awesome adapter that uses a USB plug. And this is a Nintendo GameCube controller. I mean, what is up with this button layout? It looks like someone loaded Play-Doh into a shotgun and shot the controller and this is how it landed and that's what we get. What is this little yellow analog stick here? What are these little clunky shoulder buttons and just one Z button? What's this for? This is just incredibly stupid. Stupid! I don't see how anyone could like this kid. Damn it, Joe! Let me have that. I'll tell you what this is all about. Joe, I've got to say this controller isn't as bad as you're making it out to be. This controller, while it is ugly, it works rather well. It is kind of an oddity to hold, but it works great. Nintendo made this controller so every game that you're going to play from Nintendo is going to work out awesome. This Z button works awesome in Zelda. These trigger sticks work awesome in some other game. The uh, analog stick, come on, there's absolutely no dead zone in there. You've said it yourself while playing Monkey Ball. This is by far the best analog stick out there. The uh, yellow button, that's your replacement of the C button on the N64 stick. It's a now an analog stick. The uh, green and red buttons, although different size, it makes it easy to know what the hell button you're pushing while not looking at the screen. Same with these freaking bean-shaped buttons at the top, your X and Y. It's it's an ugly controller, but it works well. And to even make the controller even better, Nintendo released an RF controller, the Wavebird, which is awesome because your cords aren't going to get tangled. You don't have to worry about anything being plugged in. The only problem with this thing, it does take regular batteries, which you're going to have to either recharge or buy. But the batteries do last one hell of a long time, as long as you can remember to turn the damn thing off when you're done playing it. And this is the controller for the Xbox 360. It's basically an upgraded version of the original Xbox pad, but they've done a few cool things that I really like. First and foremost are the shoulder buttons. Two of them are normal and two of them are triggers. I think that's a really, really good idea. It has the same kind of glassy buttons as the original Xbox controller. They're okay. Uh, it has two really nice uh, analog sticks and kind of a crappy D-pad. I mean. It's not good for fighting games or games that require a fast response because it's really stiff, but it, it, it'll do, I guess. 
and then your giant Xbox thing here that you use to turn the system on and off and your start and the back buttons and it's very comfortable to hold um, but you know that's the Xbox 360 controller it'll do and here we have the Wii remote and nunchuck accessory this controller is definitely not the most con comfortable thing to hold it's basically a regular controller but just split into two pieces um, it works okay for what it needs to be the the motion control without the Wii Motion Plus attachment here is pretty imprecise. Once you get the Wii Motion Plus on there, it's okay. But the problem is when you're playing games like New Super Mario Bros. Wii or Donkey Kong Country Returns, having the Wii Motion Plus on there is a huge chore because you do have to separate your spread your thumb way to the far sides. It's very uncomfortable. So I always like to take the damn thing off and just use it without. But using it as an old style NES controller, in my opinion, it works okay. And here we have the Wii Classic controllers, both of them. The first one with the uh, two analogs and obviously the four face buttons and two shoulder buttons, which are hugely uncomfortable, especially these middle ones here. Uh, these worked uh, fairly well with games like Super Smash Brothers and uh, older stuff for the Virtual Console and WiiWare. Um, Nintendo redesigned the controller and made it a lot more comfortable with grips and the shoulder buttons front and back instead of front and next to front. Guess what I'm standing on? Yes, it's the Wii Balance Board. And this is used for games obviously such as Wii Fit, um, Sean White skateboarding, snowboarding, any of those kind of games that some people care about, not really me. The only thing I've ever used this for is really Wii Fit. And uh, it's actually pretty good with some of the mini games in there. But the problem with it is you can't really jump in. Some of the games inside the Wii Fit actually require you to jump. So when you jump, it's really just bending your knees and lifting up and that's kind of a pain because you really want to jump and you can't. Hey, guess what? I'm playing a demo of a move game. A demo, you ask? Yes, that's because all the games that have been released for this thing pretty much suck ass. Why I bought it, I have no idea. Maybe it was just to make this video. But pretty much this is the PlayStation Move and it is very much a ripoff of the Wii Remote. And Sony so far has decided not to support it, so guess what? The five games or so that have been released is pretty much it and the uh, uh, refunctionality of Heavy Rain and maybe a few other games is, that's pretty much it I think. So enjoy it or not enjoy it, which I'm not. And this is the Kinect controller. Dave has his, I have mine. And this is how the Kinect controller works. You know, I really don't like the Kinect controller. Yeah. It's not very reliable. The batteries die like after like, what, two yeah, minutes? Two minutes? Oh, I mean, what the hell? And you know, you often have to take it into the hospital to get it revived from having died. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all either. And that's it, folks. Thanks for sticking with us through the end of this Controller Extravaganza, where we covered everything from the 32-bit system to current. Yes, and we will cover more controllers as they are invented and released. And we can't cover them yet because they don't exist yet, so please be patient with us on that front. We will get to them. And I still can't believe you like that Nintendo GameCube controller. This one right here? Yeah, that one right there. It's stupid. It's a perfect thing of function over form. It's made by Play School. Makes a big fuss. GameCube, Nintendo bless us. GameCube, it's all we easily surpass the rest. And when it comes to games, we'll always get the bad. GameCube, it makes a big fuss. GameCube, Nintendo bless us. GameCube, it's all we easily surpass the rest. And when it comes to games, we'll always. Oh, I caught one! Ah, oh, crap fish! Throw it back!